In this screencast, we'll take a look at some examples of some theorems that we'd like to prove in hyperbolic geometry. Uh, there are five, uh, so I think we can do it in one, but it might take two uh, videos to get them all in. Um, let's prove that the kappa function is strictly decreasing. Let's show that if A is less than B, kappa of A is greater than kappa of B. So here's the setup. You have a point A and a point B and this perpendicular here and some point P and some point Q that's further away and this distance is alpha, I'm sorry, is A and this distance is B. We want to talk about kappa of A, that's the angle of parallelism for P and AB. And let's talk about kappa of B, which is the angle of parallelism for Q and AB. So the claim is that kappa of alpha has kappa of A has to be bigger than kappa of B. Uh, we already know from previous work that the kappa function is non is non increasing. So we know that. It is at least true that kappa of A is greater than or equal to kappa of B. So this is where we rule out kappa of A equaling kappa of B. Let's suppose that the angles of parallelism are the same. If the angles of parallelism are the same. So PD is a limiting ray to uh, with AB. QE is a limiting parallel with AB. All of that is true. Then QE is parallel to PD, right? Because those are corresponding angles. But they're not just any parallels. They're the kind of parallels that admit a common perpendicular. They are divergent parallels because they admit a common perpendicular. And this is that theorem that we had set up where if the alternate interior angles are congruent, in this case corresponding angles does the same thing, then we have parallel lines that admit a common perpendicular, and if they admit a common perpendicular, then they are divergent parallels. Because they are divergent parallels, there exists a point R on ray QE so that the distance from R to ray PD, whatever this distance is, it's greater than B. Divergent parallels get further and further and further apart. So there's some point, there's some point R on ray QE, so that if we drop the perpendicular to ray PD intersecting at point F, the distance RF is greater than B. Then we drop the perpendicular to AB. It must be that RH is bigger than RF. And if RH is bigger than RF, then the distance from R to AB is greater than the distance from Q to AB, and you proved in a discussion that that can't be. If QE is a limiting parallel, then the distances have to get smaller with respect to AB as we go. So the kappa function is strictly decreasing. I'll look at one other in this video. Uh, we want to prove that the limit of the kappa function is zero. Uh, that is to say, here's your picture. Uh, 
So the idea is that as we run up this perpendicular here, the further up we go, the closer we get to zero, and we actually approach zero as close as we want. So what we're going to do in this case is we're going to suppose, for the sake of contradiction, there exists a positive number, call it epsilon, so that kappa of x is greater than epsilon for every x. Let's pretend we don't get to zero. There's a bound and we don't get closer to zero than that. So here's what we do. We pick some point, call it P1. Uh, this we can call P0 for fun. And we're going to construct an angle where the measure is epsilon. Well, kappa is bigger than epsilon. The angle of parallelism is bigger than epsilon. And if the angle of parallelism is bigger than epsilon and this ray is drawn at the epsilon angle, then this ray has to intersect line AB because that angle is less than the angle of parallelism. And then we drop a perpendicular. And then we come another distance up here. So maybe this is a unit, this is a unit. These will all be equally spaced. And we do the same thing. We draw an angle of measure epsilon. And then we drop a perpendicular. And we just keep doing this. Well, eventually, there are n of these. Eventually, you have the last one, the nth one, at this angle. Epsilon intersects here. And so you just got a whole bunch of that happening. There exists a positive integer n such that n times the defect of triangle P0, P1, Q1 is greater than 180. There exists such an n. And because defects are additive, that implies each of these little triangles here have a defect. That implies that the defect of triangle P0, Pn, Vn is greater than 180, and that's a contradiction. Cannot be. And since this can't happen, that must. More examples, more epsilons in the next video.